Hey, 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 hey. The objective of this video is to perform a significance test for the slope. So, let's get to it. You're looking right here at the equation. So when they say, what is the generic formula? Well, wait a minute. Do I keep seeing this thing? Deja vu? Okay. Yes. Here, test statistic minus the parameter divided by the standard deviation of the statistic. But what is the standard deviation of the statistic for this test of slope? It is the standard error of B, which is going to be given to us. So let's put this equation here, the specific one, in perspective. We're, telling it, we're saying it's a, t it's a t test, a t distribution. We've got the slope of the sample, and then we've got the slope of the population. We have a degree of freedom, which is still 2, and the reason is because we have two variables, so x and y. And yeah, I did actually didn't look it up. I just kind of happened to see it. Okay, so what are the conditions and assumptions? Well, the conditions and assumptions were the same as it was for the um, just drawing a blank. The same as for the confidence intervals. And remember, as spoken on the previous video, they are linear. We want to make sure that the relationship between X and Y really is or does have a linear relationship. 10%. Well, that sounds familiar. Okay, we are making sure that we're going to be going 10% of the sample comparing it to the population. And yes, the idea of independence comes in here too. We want to make sure that the first, the second outcome is not affected by the first. So, in other words, we're doing sampling without replacement. Oh, that's another way of looking at it, but remember, I've mentioned that to you before. Here, normality. Normality is a little tricky. We want to see if the response variable, the output, is approximately normal. Next checking the standard deviation, making sure that they are um, equal standard deviation when it comes to the response variable again. So in other words, we're checking to see if you're, um, if they're the same, your values of y are going to be the same um, for all the values of x. And when I say the same, remember like I said, I've talked about before, we're talking about equally distant. And, of course, randomness, random samples, or random um, experiment. Now, please remember, I said this before, if you, this is a lot to remember. This is same old, same old, same, so 10% normality, randomness. Well, it makes sense, the linearity thing. But if you um, don't stress out about this one, because in the test and on the AP test, like I say, said, they say assumptions, conditions and assumptions have been met. So I'm like, thank you. I ain't got to memorize all that mess. Okay. Now, when conducting the um, test for inference, because that's what we're doing right now. We're conduct conducting a hypothesis test. Here, remember, we're always, your HO is always saying no to the HO. So there's no relationship between it. There is a relationship. Now, notice I changed that because I wrote them down wrong. So take out your whiteout. But see, here's the thing. If there's no linear relationship, are we going to use that to make a prediction? And the answer is no, we're not. Okay, next. Here, let's see. So as we look for the details of this test um, statistic, we make sure the inference has been met. Um, so all the conditions and assumptions. And then, now here, our null hypothesis is going to be the slope is equal to zero. Now we're going to talk about that in a little bit more detail. But in most cases, the slope is going to be equal to zero. And look at that test statistic. The sample minus the parameter over the standard deviation of the sample. Those are the only three things we need. Yes, there's that ugly formula that, honestly, we are not going to be concerned about. Why? 
You don't have to need, you don't have to have it for the AP test. Yeah, it's a mantra. If we ever have to put raw data in the calculator, it gives it to us too. So hey, ugly formula, not necessary. Okay, let's go to the next page. So, as before, in calculating the p-value, we're looking at your um, whether it's going to be less than or greater than, and that direction helps us to make a determination on what the hypothesis test is. Well, that's not new. Our degree of freedom, remember, because we got two variables, x and y, is n minus 2. Looks familiar right here, except here we're talking about beta is going to be greater than whatever the hypothesized value is, going to be less than whatever the hypothesized is going to be equal to. And in most cases, it's not 100% of the time, but it's really seriously 99% of the time in stats 1, because that's what we're in, it's going to be 0. Again, we'll talk about why it'll be 0 in a minute. Okay, in a minute, here it is. Okay, so as we fill in this information, if the sample data suggests a linear relationship between two variables, we can determine that it's not happened by chance, or whether there is actually a linear relationship between the um, x and y. So when that happens, we are performing a test, okay, in which our null hypothesis is going to equal to zero. Now, please remember, as I said here, the regression line with a slope of, of zero is horizontal. Well, then what this means is that y does not change. So that's the reason for our zero. But when x change, but um, y does not change at all when x changes. But here, when the when h o is equal to zero, they say that there's no linear relationship between, and that is what we need to know. We're saying that there's h o means no. There's no linear relationship. So in other words, what we're saying is that the linear relationship of y, given our x, has no value in predicting y. And that is the whole idea. It has no value, so why are we going to use it? Oh, we aren't, if it's applicable. Drop the mic. Now, please read the scenario at the bottom of page 7. Please recognize we're about to do a hypothesis test. So, what do we need? Oh, we need our... We need our slope for the sample. We need our standard deviation for the sample, so here's my B. Here's my standard error of the sample. Oh, I need my um, population. Well, wasn't my population here equal to zero in the HA? Yes, it will be. So with that being said, that means that B is equal to zero. So let's proceed to the next page. Okay, so now that you've read the scenario, and I want to do part A and B in class, let's just jump to our hypothesis test so we know we have to state, plan, do, conclude. So, what is the state? Yep. So... <clears throat> They are trying to see, do the data provide evidence that there's a linear relationship between table time and caloric consumption of toddlers? Well, I don't see anywhere where we're saying that if they're at the table more, they have higher caloric or less, they have lower. So with that being said, yes, we know my... HO, we're still going to say no to the HO. So here it's going to be the beta is going to equal zero. Okay. And here our um, beta does not equal to zero because, like I said, they're not talking about less than or greater. They're just saying, is there any difference? Where beta is the true slope of the regression relating to the caloric consumption of time at the table um, for these toddlers. Now, next is our plan. 
oh, I got to name it so I can name it under the plan or under the state, whatever. So what is it? Yep, you're right. A t-test for B or a t-test for the, for the slope, the population um, slope. And remember, this can go up here or, or here. And yes, CNAs have been met. Now let's jump into the do. Okay, first time we've done this. So the test statistic is going to equal, what did they say? B minus the slope of the sample, which is B, time minus the big B, which is the slope of the population or of the parameter, divided by the standard error of the um, sample. So sample minus population over standard error of the sample. So, and what's the first thing I said before we turn the page? What do these numbers, where do we have them? Let's plug them in now. Okay, so let's check it out. So here, go back to your previous page. You know that that's the slope of the sample for your printout. Here, where did that come from? This comes from here, which comes from there. Okay, and then the standard error of the slope. Okay, you want your math. You got it. Pull out that basic part of your calculator and find the values. Okay, so now I've done my math. Here I have my p-value. And I want to do my p-value in the calculator. So, because I'm going to use the, um, remind you of the TCDF. So, so here... And I have my drawing to remind us, so my lowest bound, negative infinity, because I'm going to be finding the area of this. Upper bound, okay, and I know I have the absolute value there, but that's what I would need if I'm going to use the chart. My degree of freedom, remember, sample size was 20, prior page, and that makes it 18. Um, and let's paste it. Okay, so now look at that value, but what value did I get? I only got the blue value. So now, remember, it's two tails, so I also need this. And because I need the orange and blue, I need to multiply by two. Hey, I rhymed! So we see here we have the p-value. If you do it on the chart, please remember, you've got to double it. So we have to double it regardless, because realize what you're given and what, you're, what you need. We have our state, our plan, our due. Now... Let's wrap this puppy up. Let's conclude. Okay, so it's time for deja vu again. Okay, conclusion. Compare our p-value to our alpha level. We're going to reject the null hypothesis, so we have convincing evidence that there is a linear relationship between table time and um, caloric consumption. Because remember, your HO said that there's no relationship. Our HA is saying there is a relationship. TTFN, ta-ta for now. Oh, one thing I forgot to say to you, I need you to go on the internet to look for this page. Yeah, I did that on purpose, but you might find that that's very helpful. So, it might help you for future assessments. Oh, yeah, like the one that you're going to be getting very soon. So look it up, look it up in the locker under Chapter 12. Bye-bye.